God says, you're calling. It's about to get real. Like I kind of heard it's about to go down, but I actually, I don't want to use such um, terms from our culture because the truth of the matter is, is that God's plans and purposes for us are, they are divine and they require a certain amount of reverence and honor. Okay. You guys, this is Pastor Dawn. Um, if you believe that the previous prophetic word that I just shared, which is um, uh, your new life, all things new. And I really believe that this prophetic word is for you as well. And um, it also has a lot of scripture. And so I'm just gonna share the scripture references. They will be in the description of the video. You need to take the time to read them and study in them. Study them. And as with all prophetic words, um, you should always test the spirits. Um, you should test every prophetic word, including mine. And one of the ways that you will know whether or not it's a true prophetic word is if it aligns with scripture. Now only you and you and God can determine if it's meant for you now in this season of your life or maybe in the near future or maybe not at all. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and get into it. All right, you're calling. It's about to get really real, says the Lord. All right, God says, during the long seasons in the wilderness, I reveal to you your calling your gifting or giftings, your purpose or purposes, your direction or directions for your true life in me, says the Lord. I loved the way he worded that. He says that he has revealed these things to you for your true life in him and where they will and where your true life in him will take you, okay? God says some of what I revealed to you you did not want. And I'm thinking like Moses. Um, I'm going to interject this. So remember when God called Moses and Moses was like, look, I can't talk good. I'm a stutterer. I can't do this. And he made all kinds of excuses. Like he really didn't want to answer the call of God of his life. And God was like, look, just take your brother Aaron or whatever. Um, I'm going to share this because I think it's kind of funny. Years and years and years ago, um, my prophetic gifting, like, uh, like just person after person after person after person over a period of years just kept confirming it, right? And in fact, um, on two different occasions by two different apostles, I've been um, ordained as both a prophet and a pastor. Oh, and by the way, if you don't believe in female pastors and you don't believe in prophets, please unfollow me. I mean, I say that with all um, love and generosity and kindness to you, but if you just don't believe in that sort of thing, then don't torture yourself by watching somebody's channel and you just don't believe in that sort of thing. Okay. All right. So anyway, um, but I remember, um, I was okay with the calling to like pastoral ministry, but prophetic ministry, I was like, I don't want that Lord. <laughs> and eventually, you know, the Lord was like, look, you already said yes. So anyway, okay, let me get back to the word. Sorry about that. Uh, rabbit trail, right? <clears throat> God says, some of what I revealed to you about your calling or your pl uh, plans or purposes God has for your life, you didn't want. But as I empowered you by my grace and strengthened you by my spirit, says the Lord, you eventually, sorry, you eventually consented to my plans and purposes. Uh, look up Jeremiah 29, 11. Y'all, I can just testify. I did not want to answer the call of God in my life. Well, we're going to move on. Anyway. God says, you have enough revelation to step forward, to go forth, and to begin taking enemy territory and building the kingdom works that I've called you to establish. God says, wait on the divine reset instructions. They are needed for accurate navigation in your promised land. Um, I am reminded of um, one of my spiritual mentors is Dr. Bill Winston in the Chicago area. And um, where his church is, they actually like bought, bought this entire strip mall area and they bought it. And as soon as they bought it, uh, some city council or city government, I don't know. Anyway, they passed this ordinance that they weren't allowed to have church services there. And Dr. Winston went to the Lord. And he's like, Lord, what do I do? I know you told me to buy this. And now they're telling me that like, we're going to move in here and this is going to be our church home. And they're saying that we can't have church services. It had something to do with zoning or something stupid, right? And so he prayed and he sought the Lord. And the Lord, he woke up one morning early. And the Lord, I can't remember the scripture, but the Lord told him to go and meet with the mayor and to read a specific scripture to him. Dr. Winston was like, what? 
But anyway, so he, he went and he met with the mayor. He read that scripture to him and the mayor moved things around and they were able to hold church services in that building that they had just purchased. All right. So the reason I share that is, as I just said, God says, wait on the divine reset instructions for they are needed for accurate navigation in your promised land. And so sometimes um, the instructions that God will give us may not always make sense, but we need them in order to be able to navigate what he's told us to navigate. Okay. All right. So God says you have been cloaked with new mantles of authority, power, and God's glory. Authority. Okay. So what I'm going to read next, some of you are called to some of it. Some of you are called to parts of it. Like you have to discern that between you and the Lord. Okay. But I'm just reading everything that is possible. So God says authority to cast out demons. If you don't believe in the casting out of demons, then please don't follow my channel. And then this word is not for you. Okay. Um, authority to dispel works of darkness. Authority to break off demonic bondages. God says power to work miracles, signs, and wonders at his bidding. And when he said bidding, I'm like, Lord, that seems like such a weird word. What does that mean? And so I looked it up. The word bidding means the ordering or requesting of someone to do something. So when God wants to work miracle signs and wonders through us, it's because it is his will. It is, it's what he desires. And it's not something that we just conjure up that we want to do. Like it's something that he, that he moves us to do. If that makes sense. Okay. All right. Let me go on. So, um, God says, I want you to begin to dream again in your mind's eye. And so some of what I'm about to read here is like specifically directed towards me. But as I read these things, I want you, I want you to ask the Lord to speak to you because there are things that he wants you to begin to build in your mind's eye. Like you, you have to be able to see it with your spiritual eyes before you will ever see it in the natural realm. Okay. So God says, see the salvations of the salvation of many souls, one to the kingdom of God. All right. Well, if you're, if that, well, actually every single one of us is called to win souls to the kingdom of God. All right. God says, see people healed in their bodies, see the lame to walk and the dead raised to new life. Now, if you don't feel like that's your calling, then that's okay. I'm just saying that's part of my calling. So what God is saying through this part is that you need to see, well, you need to ask God, Lord, show me what it is that you want me to begin um, using my Holy Spirit led imagination, like building eyes of faith, if that makes sense. Okay. God says, see the broken and the addicted free from bondages. See the depressed in their right minds filled with joy. See the power. Oh, this one is so good. You guys, this part is for all of us. See the power of God released as you speak the name of Jesus. I believe God wants to give you a prophetic revelation of what, of what the power of God looks like when we speak the name of Jesus. This part is for all of us. God says, see the power of God released as you speak the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Um, God says, see uh, the people that you will speak to or that you will pray for. If you have, um, if, if you have a, uh, a, min a marketplace ministry anointing, in other words, that you are called as an entrepreneur or a business owner, or maybe you work in corporate America, I don't know. Um, and God has an anointing on you to share the gospel in those places. Then God wants you to see yourself walking that out, if that makes sense, okay? And so um, God says, see, see all of the things that I've called you to do. He goes, begin to see it in your mind's eye, okay? He goes, he wants you to begin to dream. And, and this is part of building with eyes of faith. All right. Okay. All of these things, God says, are merely avenues and opportunities for God to do his work in the earth through you. These things that I've just listed, some of these are like things that God's called me to do, but God's called you to do specific things. He wants you to begin to envision them, um, begin to dream about them. He says that these are merely avenues and opportunities for him to do his work in the earth through you. And he goes, there was a point in the wilderness. And so if you believe this word is for you, then what I'm about to say is going to resonate with you. 
God said, there was a point in the wilderness where you realized that it was my work, says the Lord, that I have called you to build, not you building the work that you wanted to build. I'm gonna say that again. There was a point in the wilderness where you realized that it was his work that he has called you to build, not you building the works that you desire to build. It says, and now that we've gotten that straight, <laughs> God says you are commissioned to move forward, to go forth with the strong power and hand of God upon you. I just realized I haven't been sharing the scriptures that all of this is based on. If you guys will look, I don't want to re-record this video. So if you will check out the description of this video, all of the scriptures um, that are associated with this prophetic word are there. You should make sure that you go and check them out. Okay. And God says, now that we've gotten that straight, that this is his work that he's building through us, <laughs> he says, you are commissioned to move forward, to go forth with a strong pan power and hand of God upon you. And again, I'm seeing the number 323. Um, I'm also, so 323 in the Strong's Concordance, um, it, is an, it is a calling or um, a commissioning into office. And I'm going to leave that description in the video, in the video description. Okay. God says, because you are building my works according to my plans and my specifications, says the Lord, then all things will be provided for you from my riches in glory, from the king's treasury. I need you guys to read Ezra chapter six. It talks about the decree of King Darius. It's too long of a story. But again, all the scriptures that are associated with this prophetic word are in the video description. So I'm going to read that again. God says, because you are building my works according to my plans and specif specifications, all things will be provided for you from my riches and glory, says the Lord, from the king's treasury. God says, I've said before, I trust you with people and I trust you with money. God says, steward well what I place into your hands and I will trust you with more. Um, look in the video description for the, the scripture on the story of the talents. All right. God says your calling. Now your calling can either be in business or in ministry or both. But God says your calling is going to shock and amaze you. It will literally cause you to drop to your knees in greater reverence and honor to me, says the Lord in awe of what I do through feeble hands and hearts of men and women. I want to read that one more time. God says your calling, whether it's to business or ministry or both, is going to shock and amaze you. It will literally cause you to drop to your knees in greater reverence and honor to me, says the Lord, to him, not me. In awe of what God will do through feeble hands and feeble hearts of men and women. All right. Uh, if you believe that this word is for you, um, I want you to watch to the very end. I have some very important instructions for you. But right now, I just want to encourage you that I want you to come into agreement with this word if you know it's for you. I want you to get into the comments and say, my calling is about to get real in God. My calling is about to get real in God. And then I want to share with you some instructions. Okay, you guys, just a couple more things. Please stay to the very end because I have some really cool instructions for you and I don't want you to miss out on our next new event. Okay, so first of all, um, all of you that are subscribers to the channel, thank you so much for coming back over and over again. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure that you do that right now. And I just want to say welcome to the family. If you've not yet hit the bell uh, for instant notifications of whenever I go live or upload new content, make sure that you hit that right now. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you that send in your testimonies or even just words of encouragement of how um, the content of this channel is ministering to you or helping you to grow in faith or however it has encouraged you. I really, really appreciate the feedback. And thank you to all of you that financially support the ministry of this channel. We could not do this without you. So whether it is your tithes or your love offerings or your faith seeds, I just want to say thank you. I pray over each and every financial donation that God will minister and multiply it back to you 30, 60, 100, even a thousand fold. And if you put in the memo section what you are believing God for, um, I always pray over that as well. Speaking of which, you guys, if I had not learned the principles of God's economy, 
of tithing and sowing and reaping, I would have never made it through my own wilderness season. It was during those seven years, and yes, mine was seven years. It was during those seven years that if I had not learned those principles, I would not have made it out alive financially. And so it's why I share, I share the information all the time. So uh, I've always been taught and I learned it myself by walking through that, but that if what you have in your hand is not big enough for your need, then what you have in your hand is a seed that you need to sow. And so if you go to the story of 2 Kings uh, chapter 4 of the widow's olive oil, or even Matthew 14 verses 13 through 21, the little boy's uh, five loaves and two fish. You guys, as I said, that time that I spent in my own wilderness season, um, it was not pretty. Like literally, uh, it was really a wilderness season. I oftentimes was only receiving what I needed financially for the next day or the next two days or the next three days. It was literally like the Israelites that received uh, fresh manna every single day. But what I learned was I learned that working on God's economy is 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times more sure than trusting in the finances of this world. And so this is one of the reasons why I share it every single time I share a message. Not only that, I don't think I've ever sh shared this with you guys. Um, the Lord told me one time, uh, I was sowing a seed of faith. I'm like, Lord, why do you keep making me do this? And he said to me, he said, Dawn, he says, you have a greater need to sow your financial seed in faith, trusting that you will reap a harvest and that I, the Lord, will meet your need. He goes, you have a greater need to sow that financial seed than that minister or that ministry or that church has need to receive your financial seed. I go, what? He said, <laughs> I go, that doesn't make any sense, Lord. He goes, oh, yes, it does. He goes, if you understand the principle of seed time and harvest, he goes, you can't reap a harvest of something that you haven't sown. He goes, and you have a need right now, don't you, Dawn? And I'm talking about that season in the wilderness where I went through a lot of financial lack. I said, yes, I do. He said, you have a greater need to sow that seed than they have a need to receive your seed sown. And I began to see that over and over and over and over and over again. And so that's one of the reasons why I share this almost every t single time I share content. It's because I know that if you guys will tap into, um, if you will tap into God's economy, you will eventually begin to grow exponentially in your finances. All right. Last thing, I don't want you to miss our next event. It is called Deuteronomy 11, 11, possessing your uh, promised land and it's going to be on November 11th and I don't want you to miss it so please go to my website at dawnchurchill.org or if you stay to the very very end of this video then you will um, you'll receive information about it and so um, by the way all of our giving links I, I forgot to tell you that all of our giving links are in the description of this video they're also on the front page of my website which is dawnchurchill.org